Hello everyone, welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news of the next GSA meeting this Friday, the major accomplishment of SpaceX last week, news from the police department, election news, today's KZGN Talking Points editorial, weather, sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. Well, the next meeting on the formation of our local groundwater sustainability agency is just a few days away. It is scheduled to be this Friday. It will be held at the Ridgecrest City Hall and start at 5 p.m. and go to about 7 p.m. People all over are still discussing our water overdraft problem. One person found a document showing the nine criteria that are required to create a successful GSA. It was interesting and useful. It will be interesting to see if the elected eligible agencies have included these in their draft APA forming the GSA. So, if you're interested in the formation of this new water agency, plan on attending this Friday. It's at 5 p.m. at Ridgecrest City Hall. Now here's a request from the Ridgecrest Police Department. Recently, the Police Department has seen an increase in locating people trespassing or living in properties that are supposed to be vacant. People find these vacant properties and just move in. Often squatters move into a property and create an eyesore and health hazard for the neighborhood. In most cases, the squatters will damage or destroy the property, causing the owner an undue financial burden. If you see a property being used by squatters, please contact the police department and report it. If you have a vacant property you would like the police department to check on frequently, please contact the code enforcement officer, Fred Booth, or send a Facebook message to the Ridgecrest Police Department Facebook page. Everyone is encouraged to notify the police department if you see any suspicious people around homes, vacant or occupied. Now, did you get a chance to see the amazing accomplishment of the SpaceX Corporation's landing of their rocket? It was amazing! This was the fourth attempt to do this feat. Do you realize how hard it is to bring back a tall rocket like that, perfectly upright, hit a spot in the ocean, and burn just the right amount of fuel to have it softly land? This is amazing. Stay with us. Later, today's Ridgecrest Talk will be a full half hour dedicated to this amazing accomplishment. The entire video of the launch, deployment for the satellite, and the landing of the rockets will be shown. Well, what's new in the elections? Trump and Clinton are showing huge leads in the next election, which will be New York. At stake are 95 delegates for the Republicans and 247 delegates for the Democrats. New York polls currently show Trump with 54%, Kasich with 21%, and Cruz with 18%. If Trump gets over 50% in the election, he could take all the delegates. If he is under 50%, the delegates could be proportioned off. For the Democrats, the polls show Clinton leading with 55% to Sanders with 41%, but polls do show some closing in of the margin for Sanders. For Democrats, the current delegate count is Clinton with 1287 and Sanders with 1037. The current delegate count for the Republicans showed Trump with 743 to Cruz with 545 and Kasich with 143 delegates. The real turmoil now is the Trump Organization calling foul over the process in some states states like Louisiana and Colorado. In Louisiana, Trump won the state by 3.6%, but the RNC is issuing delegates in a manner that will give Cruz 10 more delegates than Trump. Whether they have rules to back up that distribution, there is still something wrong when the winner of the vote of the people doesn't at least have one more delegate than the loser. Then in Colorado, 
The system is set up to allow for no real vote of the people. Only delegates are chosen, and these people can be replaced by state Republican leader if they don't vote the way the establishment wants them to vote. Here's a video of one disenfranchised Trump delegate. A Colorado Trump delegate left the convention hall in disgust Saturday after his name was removed from the ballot and replaced with that of a Senator Ted Cruz supporter. Larry Wayne Lindsay said in a video posted to YouTube that he'd been a Republican delegate representing Douglas County for 15 years, as well as a lifelong member of the party, but he's had it. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's been a real long time since I've been this pissed off. I'm here at the state convention in Douglas, well, down in Colorado Springs, Colorado, at the World Center here. And um, I've spent the last hour in line. Um, I mean, Douglas County didn't even have a table for their delegates. Uh, they've got some guys standing out there with a stick and a sign on it. And, um, but I've spent the last hour trying to get my credentials so I can get in and and uh, get a vote today. And I guess my precinct captain made good on her threats. My name is no longer on the roster. As a delegate, I have been removed and replaced. My vote nullified because I voted for Trump. And um, so now I'm uh, driving back home. There's nothing else I can do here. Uh, I am unbelievably pissed. This uh, patty bunch of little piss ants over here. Uh, if they think they're going to get away with this, they're sadly mistaken. Um, I'm going to raise holy hell about this to everybody that I can get to listen. Uh, I'm, I'm sick to death of how dishonest and corrupt these people are in Douglas County for the GOP. Uh, I'm ashamed to call myself a Republican, and after this, uh, after this election here, I won't be. I never will be again. I've been a lifelong Republican all of my life, and uh, this corrupt bunch of thieves is not even worth fighting for. Uh, I find another party that uh, believes more like I do. Uh, I've had it with them, but Jan Morgan. You're not going to get away with this. I'll find somebody um, who will listen to me. I'll find some way to hold you accountable for this. That video proves that Trump isn't just being a sore loser. There is something rigged in the nomination process. So that's the latest on the elections. In news from the Indian Wells Valley Water District, they have this announcement. With the start of April, the summer water restrictions go into effect. The Indian Wells Valley Water District wants to remind everyone of the summer water restrictions. Outside watering can only be done on certain days. Even home addresses can water on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Odd addresses can only water on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. You can only water during the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. No watering on Mondays. Make sure to not allow any runoff into the street. All water must stay on your property. And remember, there is also no outside watering within 48 hours of any rainfall. The Water District wants to remind everyone, don't waste water, use water responsibly. If you see water violations, go to the IWVWD website and report it. Violators will be cited and fined. Now stay with us. After the break, we'll have the 134th KZGN News Talking Points Editorial. Thanks for staying with us. Now it's time for the 134th KZGN News Talking Points Editorial. Here's today's topic. Can we use rainwater to recharge the aquifer? And what about the water in the Bowman Flood Channel? But first, a couple comments were received from last Thursday's editorial titled, Did the City Council vote to keep the water fountain on the right vote? My conclusion was, after the staff report on the actual use of the fountain, it was the council decision to keep the fountain operating was the right one. I also stated that the only aspect that would support shutting it off was the principle of the issue of just conserving water any way we can. Here are the comments. Skip said, I agree, Tom. Larry said, when I saw this on the council agenda, I thought, really? 
in his opinion, a really ridiculous thing to complain about. I agree with the council's decision to continue operating the fountain. By the way, when my wife and I married, we rented facilities at Kermagee, and the fountain was a nice backdrop for many of our wedding pictures. And like I predicted, Michael wrote, I disagree. It is a matter of principle. Why can't our leaders lead by example? Why can't we, complainers, expect our leaders to live by the rules they enforce upon the people they serve? We, little people, the complainers, are bombarded with the gloom and doom stories to support or abide by rules of water conservation. In short, if the need to conserve water is as vital as we complainers are led to believe, it is either vital for everyone or the doom and gloom gets lost in translation. And one person, I forgot to get his name, stopped me in Albertsons and said this, Heck, I'm sick of this argument about water. What I'd like to see is our leaders get together and do a decent study to determine exactly what our situation really is. Enough arguing. Someone has to be able to study our aquifer and get us real answers. I guess I agree with that sentiment. So that's the couple comments I received. Now speaking of water, here's today's topic. Can we use rainwater to recharge the aquifer? And what about the water in the Bowman Flood Channel? And I'll admit right from the start, this editorial will be filled with more questions than answers. Well, a few months ago I asked the City Council what we were doing to get ready for the El Nino coming. As it turned out, they did absolutely nothing to get ready for the El Nino. Of course, it was then predicted that it would bring us substantial rain. Well, that really didn't happen. We did get some decent rain, but not the huge El Nino predicted. But I have to say, the council did nothing to get ready to capture the rainwater we received. Every water analysis states that 70% of the fresh water California gets every year flows out into the ocean. California does not have and will not build sufficient water storage to capture that water. What about the city? I have to wonder, can we inject rainwater into the aquifer? I can't seem to get a good answer to that. And I asked the council, what about the water the Bowman Flood Channel stores when it rains? Why can't that water get used somehow instead of just letting it sit there and evaporate? Could a drain or a well pipe be installed down into the aquifer and let it drain into the aquifer? I guess one of the first concerns that would be raised is what contaminants might be in the water when drained into the aquifer. That should be a concern. But then there has to be a way we could inject the water into the aquifer. Now, will it help much for the overdraft? I don't know. I'm not a water study guy. However, just like some folks preach principle in water conservation, wouldn't capturing that water and injecting it into the ground be a good thing? Has the city council looked into this idea? I don't think so. Has anyone looked into the idea? I haven't heard anyone discuss it yet. The council has discussed building a new sewer plant. One of the options was tertiary treatment of the water to make it suitable to be injected back into the aquifer. That is a pretty good thing to look into. But if the city is willing to spend millions of dollars building that option to the new sewer plant, I can't understand why we aren't looking at the water in the Bowman Flood Channel for the same purpose. The Bowman Flood Channel is designed to run the water into the area of the city's old sewer plant on Colony Line Road, out by the animal shelter. And it is there that the city's sewer plant on the base pumps water back into the area by the shelter to grow alfalfa. Why can't we drill a well there and inject the water into the aquifer? Now, I'm sure someone will add that there isn't enough water to be cost effective. Well, think about this. Besides letting the Bowman Flood Channel fill up when it rains, we also let the dry lakes on base fill up too. Mirror Lake and China Lake. Rainwater does run off and pool in these normally dry lake beds. Again, all we do with the water is let it sit there and evaporate. And again, China Lake is close to the sewer plant on base. It could be tied in by pipeline to the sewer plant on base pretty easy. And Mirror Lake is usually just the runoff coming from the south end of town. Again, in the vicinity of the Bowman Flood Channel. Back in the 1970s, the Army Corps of Engineers determined that the Bowman Flood Channel could catch and control at least 50% of the flood water that falls in the valley. This project could really help the principled water conser conservationist. This is a project the entire valley has a stake in. The county, the city, the navy, heck, even our friends in Trona. They tap our aquifer and run the water to Trona. All these agencies should get together and do something already. Oh yeah, I know. 
we are forming the Groundwater Sustainability Agency to handle the issue, which has to be established by state law. But do you realize we are now over six months into setting up this agency and the main parties are still just discussing the legal document we are going to use to establish the agency? Why can't the main players just commit to going to a meeting, an open public meeting, each with their attorneys, and sit there and get it done already? Instead of meeting after meeting, they spend a couple hours yakking and complaining and accomplishing little, if anything. If we have water sitting in the valley, and just like the state, we do nothing with the water, but yet everyone says we have a water problem and we must fix or perish. And our leaders just argue over the formation of documents for the months and months. In conclusion, just once I wish our county and city would get together and do something about the problem. Enough talk already. Enough meetings already. Do something. I'm Tom Wendick and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. Please email them to info at kzgn.net. Now stay with us for weather and sports after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Now here's Lane with the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, large hail, damaging wind gusts, and an isolated tornado will be possible Tuesday for portions of South Texas to the Gulf Coast. Isolated large hail will also be possible along the Central Gulf Coast Tuesday morning. Isolated heavy rainfall will be possible along the Central Gulf Coast on Wednesday. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina's at 64, Georgia is 71, Arkansas is 61, Northern Texas at 51, Arizona at 74, and Los Angeles at 68. And for us locally, tonight, mostly clear with a low around 54, south-southwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 20. Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high near 81, west-southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a low around 55, west-southwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 20. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 74. West wind, 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low around 47. West northwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Friday, sunny with a high near 73. North wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 48. North northwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 20. And Saturday, sunny with a high near 81. North wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. So that's the news for today. All the KZD and TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing. KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Ridgecrest Talk. Today's Ridgecrest Talk will be full coverage with complete video of the SpaceX launch, satellite deployment, and landing of the rocket booster. It will be coming up next on Ridgecrest Talk.